Hi, Liz. Hey, how are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm great. Good. Let, ask it. let me introduce this. I'm uh, Robert Wright of Blogging Heads TV, and you're Liz Mayer. Do you want to tell us a little about yourself? Ooh, well, where to start? Um, well, I... for starters, didn't you used to work for the Republican <laughs> National Committee? I did. Okay, so uh, we've got you pegged. You've got me pegged, yeah. In 2008, I was the online communications director for the Republican National Committee, and I've continued doing political and public affairs consulting since then. In addition to that, I do a lot of commentating online and on TV and on cable about politics. And so, I don't know, I'm kind of a jack of all trades in some respects. Okay. I guess today I'm here in, my, in more of my commentator role, but we'll, we'll see where the discussion we goes. We are looking for some commentary for you. It's yes. true, specifically on last night's debate. Now, I think when this was set up, maybe the anticipation had been, since I'm a liberal and you're conservative, we might argue about who won the debate. I don't think I'm really prepared to argue that Obama won the debate in the terms that matter, you know. Uh, you might argue that in the high school debate scoring sense, you know, if you look at the merits, maybe you could make that argument in terms of the substance of what they argued about. But this was not a successful outing for President Obama. I assume you're not going to disagree with that? I'm not going to disagree. In fact, I'm going to go so far as to say um, I consulted at the beginning of this whole process for Rick Perry. Um, so I'm, I'm used to watching somebody whose strength is not debating. And I think the way that I felt at certain junctures in debates where I just kept hoping there was an opportunity for Perry to just do a bit better and just stick it to Romney, I'm pretty sure that's exactly how all Obama supporters watching that last night felt. There, so, were, there was a lot of that in my, in my brain, at least. Um, it was frustrating. I mean, uh, <sighs> Well, first, why don't you, why don't you, I mean, I would like to get into that a little, I guess. Why don't you tell us the, the key senses in which Romney won? What did he do? Well, I mean, I'm not sure that Romney necessarily won based on his own performance, but Obama certainly lost. Um, I mean, what, what Romney did, I think Romney came off as a more normal, likable, relatable guy than what he has tended to do certainly in a lot of the coverage that we have seen, and certainly in a lot of the ads that we've seen. I think that the Obama team has been very good about pinpointing things that make Romney look like this sort of weird, robotic, unrelatable, extremely rich guy that has nothing in common with you, and why would you like him? Um, I don't think we actually saw a great deal of that last night, which is good from Romney's perspective. So that is one thing that he did well. I think he also was pretty polished very fluid in the way that he spoke. Um, I think that he was much more efficient in terms of getting his point across. And I think that contrasted very sharply with what we saw from President Obama, where to me, it appeared that he was extremely rambling, um, highlighting a lot of things that I would describe as really small ball policy and not something that gave an indication of a broader picture, which I think you have to do when you're looking at trying to bring over those last few undecided voters one way or another, probably what they're voting on isn't, let's have more science teachers. Probably what they're voting on is, what is your overarching vision for America? And I don't think we got that from Obama at all. I think we got a, little, a lot of little policy tweaks, tidbits, that kind of thing. And I think from Romney, we did get something more akin to that, though I know that there are people who obviously have issues with the specifics of what he said, and, and in some cases, I agree with those. Yeah, um, I, I'm not sure Obama so much needed to get across some big vision. I would focus more on what you said about how uh, Romney had been successfully painted by the Obama ads. I mean, look, if your narrative is that Romney is this out-of-touch, rich, heartless rich guy, you got to go with your narrative. And I just think Obama didn't do that at all. He didn't, you know, he didn't play the class warfare card in human terms. You might say that, you know, it's, it was implicit in some of the policy pronouncements that Obama made, but I just thought there were a lot of opportunities, like in that big argument about Romney's tax cuts, and, and Obama is saying, you did too, you know, you did too uh, propose a $5 trillion tax cut, and we can get into the specifics of, of that. And I think Obama even, first of all, failed to, to, to drive home his, you know, his argument that actually Mitt Romney did say this and, and, 
and is now kind of covering it up. But leave that aside. I mean, I, I think Obama just failed to put that in human terms and say, look, here's a specific, here's a specific impact of what you have definitely proposed. This forget the five trillion. You proposed a tax cut. And it would have had this effect on some particular rich person, you know, hypothetical rich, but somebody making $10 million would now under your plan A and B. Meanwhile, the, you know, the impact on a middle class person would be, you know, whatever. He, he just didn't tend to put things in those terms, in human, in human terms. And, and, and I would like to see more of that. I, I agree with that. But I think that the other, the other thing that, sort of leads me to the conclusion that I guess I sort of espoused earlier is I think that's true, but I think that that does have to do with the overarching vision, right? Because, or at least the way that I think Obama would want that depicted, because I think what he is trying to do is say Romney would be bad for the middle class, Romney doesn't understand the middle class, Romney doesn't care about the middle class, and I think obviously Romney's trying to say no, none of those things are true. The problem is, is that, yeah, when, when you go out and when you're talking about um, you know, on the tax discussion, for example, he talks about getting rid of tax subsidies for oil companies. Well, one of my beefs with that is that I, I actually don't think that he understands the relevant tax code, and what he's doing is rhetorically perhaps very effective, but from a policy standpoint is pretty silly. Um, you know, he's talking about that, which is a really small tweak. He's talking about things like the bucket rule, really small tweak. That's not stuff that actually is going to help the middle class. That's something that's going to do a very, very small amount to put a tiny dent in the deficit. And when you're going in the direction of that and you're not doing the sort of Clinton-esque thing about personalizing things and talking in those broader terms, it's really difficult for people to look and say, okay, well, so what's wrong with Romney? Like, what, where's the contrast here? Because from what I'm hearing, it sounds like he's saying he's not going to raise my taxes and he's not going to cut taxes for all these other people and he's not going to jack up the deficit. And so we've got one guy who basically appears to be right on all of this stuff and another guy who's talking about how the main problem with him is that he doesn't want to you know, do a tiny little bit of tinkering to the tax code over here that's going to do basically nothing about a $16 trillion national debt. I think that's a real problem for Obama. Um, and maybe that ties in with him being a bit professorial. Frankly, I think a lot of it, though, is just that I think his general um, view of himself is that he's much better at going out and advocating things and defending them than what I think a lot of America has come to believe at this point. I think, unfortunately, in 93 minutes, there was ample time for everybody to see that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I... I, I guess maybe have it having it, you know, uh, there's some truth to that. I do think, and let, let me give a, another example of kind of the same thing I was saying. I do think he just, he just failed to nail Romney in human terms. There was a moment where he said to Romney, you would on the one hand give a tax break to people like me and you, and that part's okay. You would give a tax break to rich people. That part's mm -hmm. okay. And then he says, uh, and meanwhile, that y you would take away, and then it, and it's like money for investment in public education or something. No, the way to fill that out is to say, meanwhile, the child of a middle-income parent in Ohio is going to have, you know, there's going to be less money to pay for textbooks or something, right? I mean, uh, it, it, it gets to what you're, you know, the, what everyone's saying about him being too professorial. I mean, put the damn thing in human terms. And of course, the, the, uh, another failing is related to, you know, you're saying, well, Obama is, you know, the, these little these little piecemeal uh, ending, these little piecemeal deductions. Well, of course, the question of, of deductions you're going to end uh, is, is something that, you know, that, that, that Romney, <laughs> you know, uh, should have been grilled a little bit more on. Uh, you know, this we get back to this tax issue where, uh, Romney is, you know, is, is saying, I'm going to give this big tax cut. This is what he said. Uh, but don't worry. I'm going to end these deductions so it'll all come out in the end and don't reduce the deficit. And Obama, you know, I mean, I've already said it in a way that, that, that you know, that I think more successfully ridicules it than, than Obama did last night, right? I mean, Obama oh. kind of alluded to the fact that you want, you know, but but I just thought, I just thought he should have been prepared to to just make fun a little more of the fact that that 
Romney claims to have this magical solution that he won't talk about. He actually did a little bit. He did a little bit. But, I mean, don't, don't you think that, was, that is more of a vulnerability than Obama exploited? Potentially. I mean, I think part of the difficulty here also is the fact that you actually had the Romney guys come out with some more specifics about what they were looking at in terms of deductions right before the debate. And not to overly sort of, you know, pad Obama here or give him a pass, but I think that is sometimes a tricky thing to deal with in a debate when people haven't necessarily had a chance to run all of the numbers and make projections. It tends to result in people being a little bit more cautious about how they want to attack. I think people don't want to throw specific numbers out. And unfortunately, when we're talking about deficit, when we're talking about the impact that tax policy has on that, you kind of can't do it without those specifics. And so that's that's a challenge. But yeah, I, but I, I agree with you. I think that if the point that Obama was trying to make is that under Mitt Romney, rich people are going to have more money available and they're going to pay less in taxes, and poor people are going to pay more in taxes, it would have been better, first of all, for him to say it exactly like that, and then second of all, to back it up, as you say, with some examples about if you have, in principle, a $10 million tax bill, guess what, under him, that actually reduces to X. And maybe, you know, we, we heard some discussion about one of the target uh, groups of target voters, the cycle being the single mom who is a waitress, maybe talk about what this would mean for her, in his opinion. Now, I'm not sure, based on where we've been on tax policy and where we've seen Romney come to on that, I, I'm not actually sure that we can say definitively what any of this would mean for anybody. And so, in some respects, I think Romney saying, I'm not going to do anything that adds to the deficit, given where he's been on this kind of does tend to shut a lot of that discussion down necessarily but that's not really the point i mean if you're in a debate you're not necessarily looking to go out and make statements that are 100 percent factually correct what you're looking to do is actually hammer your opponent on where they've been and drive them in a particular direction and corner them and i just don't think obama got anywhere close to that. he didn't get anywhere close to that now what some people are saying is that he should have said to romney Okay, list these deductions. Tell us what these deductions are. Now, are you saying that because of the deductions his campaign outlined at the last minute, he actually would have had something persuasive to say? I mean, I doubt. I mean, one thing about Obama is he knows the math, and I suspect that whatever Romney said, he could have said, oh, come on, you know that doesn't add up to whatever. But but what what would he have said? You, could Romney have said something? Well, that's, I think that's an interesting question, because my understanding is that what his campaign has put out there they've been putting out really on background and without names attached to it and saying these are some of the things that we would look at, this sort of, I think they call it like the triple cap concept, right? Okay, so that's an issue because I don't know whether Romney in the context of the debate would necessarily want to say, yes, this is something that we threw out earlier and this is what I would do. I'm going to assume this is my policy mantle in the midst of this debate. I don't know if you would get him to do that. Um, you might be able, possibly, if you were very forceful in the attack, I think somebody who went after him like we saw, frankly, um, Rudy Giuliani in 2008 go after him over the sanctuary mansion stuff. If you had somebody who had that kind of approach and that sort of cut and thrust, you might be able to force him into a position where he would say, well, I'm looking at blah, blah, blah. And then you could say, okay, well, but the problem with that, as you will know, because you're a businessman and you're capable of doing math too, is that that only adds up to three and we need it to add up to five or, or whatever the case may be. You could do that. Um, I don't know about how well the numbers work out. It appears to me, based on what I have read, um, that probably what Romney is looking at doing or what it appears that he's looking at doing would pay for a lot of what he's proposing cutting or balance off a lot of what he's proposing cutting. But I don't know whether that's like 60% or 100%. And so that's something that I think they're going to have to work through mathematically. And obviously the fact that you've got three different components of it, you take away one of those components and what's the impact? Well, my guess is really when you're looking at capping deductions for the wealthiest taxpayers at $17,000, which I think is the gist of the proposal, yeah, in practice, considering the charitable deductions and um, uh, home mortgage interest deductions are a huge, huge chunk of what enables people to bring their tax liability down. Probably, actually, that does cover off a lot of the, it does offset a lot of the cost of making other reductions. But 
the precise numbers. I mean, I couldn't tell you. Well, yeah, and are we talking about a, a, the home mortgage deduction being eliminated for everyone or just above a certain no, above think, a certain income level? I, think I mean, above a certain uh, deduction level. My understanding is that what he's saying, and I can't remember what the exact income threshold is on this, but it's, it's definitely upper income taxpayers. Um, I think what he's saying is that if you are an upper income taxpayer, your deductions get capped at seventeen thousand dollars. You don't basically you're not in a position to do the, the lengthy itemization process that you would typically do as an upper income taxpayer that enables you to really vastly reduce your tax liability. So actually what's interesting about that is that um, I think Obama has talked about doing some of that too, but then also raising the rates. So what, what's actually interesting there to me is that um, probably the way that Romney would do this would not amount to an effective tax increase on the wealthy, but it might not actually result in the tax cut that Obama right. has. Now, now the, I mean, Romney's other escape hatch on, on taxes was just to say, um, look, I've said I would not do a, any tax thing that would increase the deficit. So it's just wrong for you to say, I mean, that to me, that's like saying, on one day, the candidate says, I will bomb Russia. And the next day says, I would never do anything that would start a war with Russia. And then if you say, you said you would start a war with Russia, you say, no, no, I said I would never do anything that would start a war. You know, you say you'd bomb them. You, you know, there's no way to bomb them without starting a war with them, right? And, and like, and like there is no practical, you know, so I, I, I think there too, Obama, you know, could have just kind of made fun of that whole line of, Defense, but I think with with Obama, and tell me if you agree with this. I think part of the problem is it gets back to the kind of professor versus street brawler thing. I just think at some level he does not have an instinct for the juggler. It's just not his inclination to really to really nail the guy. You know, I mean, you tell me what do you think his actual problem is? Was it lack of substantive prep, or is it a temperamental issue where he's just not a street fighter? I think it's a whole array of things, um, but I. But one thing, just to quickly jump back, that I was going to say is that it, one of the things that I think does slightly distinguish Romney on tax policy from what you were describing with regard to bombing Russia is that actually, if you look at where Romney has been on tax policy since he has run for president twice, in addition to having said different things in the course of the primary to what he's saying now. I think it's easier for him to get away with, I'm not going to do anything to raise the deficit. And in fact, I actually think if he were elected, it's totally possible that we would find out that he wouldn't make any tax changes. Well, it. sure, but that just means that he's lying when he says he'd cut taxes. I mean, that's the point, is that you've got this fundamental tension between saying you're going to have a huge tax cut and, oh, there will be deductions, but you can't talk about them, and, and, and saying you would not raise the deficit. And, 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 you know, he has two ways out of that, to say, oh, there are these deductions I won't talk about. Or to just say, wait a second, I pledged I won't increase the deficit. How can you say I would increase the deficit? I would say that is analogous to saying I will bomb Russia, but I won't start a war with Russia. I mean, just that rhetorical line of defense to say, wait a second, I've, 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 I've written this escape hatch out where I say I won't, I, won't reduce, I, will, I won't increase the deficit. Well, if your policies inexorably you know, w would increase the deficit, you have to either admit that you're not sincere about the policies you claim to be proposing or admit that you would raise the deficit. I just think that's a... I, the distinction I think here is that wh what I would say is, yes, if that if those were the only two statements that we were looking at, but with Romney, when you look at where he's been on tax policy, he's been pretty much all over the shop. I oh, great. So it's, etch -a you're, you're, so it's, it's the Etch-a-Sketch defense. Mitt Romney can in the end be anything because he said everything. Well, and that's what I'm saying is that I'm not sure that I would have gone after him the way that you're suggesting that Obama might have. I might have taken a slightly different tack. Like, you know, this guy has come up with six different things that he's possibly suggested doing right. over the course of the last however many months, however many years. Like, what's he going to do? We don't know. This is the latest thing that he's saying. I actually have a plan. Here's my plan. That's it. Done. Right. I mean, that's that's probably what would have been the better way to handle it. But jumping back to your point about sort of what is Obama's problem? is Or, it or why doesn't he handle it that way? You know, let, let's say the, et, the Etch-a-Sketch assault would have been the, the better one. And I, and, and I was sitting there wishing he would bring out the Etch-a-Sketch etch issue. What is it about Obama that kept him from deploying any number of these attacks that might have been successful? 
I mean, I think partly it is a demeanor issue. Um, but what's interesting about this to me is that actually when I look at Romney and Obama, um, I think that they have many of the same demeanor problems. I think that they tend to be sort of cold and disconnected from people. Um, they come up as kind of wet fish, for lack of a better term. Um, people don't find them necessarily to be hugely relatable. I mean, we saw this in 2008. We certainly saw this in the context of both the Democratic and the Republican primaries. You know, ultimately, Obama did prevail. Um, personally, uh, you know, I preferred him to Hillary Clinton, so I'm glad about that. But I think most people would would agree that Hillary Clinton probably was a little bit more relatable. But there were people who were willing to shove that aside because they were that bothered about her stance on the Iraq War. I think when you look at what happened in the context of 2008 on the Republican side, you know, clearly one of the big advantages that John McCain always had was that he seemed like a guy that you could have a conversation with. He always does the town hall thing. He's very good at communicating. He really likes people. Everybody senses that when they meet him. And I just don't think Romney came off the same way. So to me, you know, I, I guess what I was surprised by coming into this debate is I was expecting to see two guys who are completely cold and disconnected and not particularly interesting or engaging to anybody watching the debate and to generally feel frustrated and annoyed by it and not find either of them to be in any way likable. And for once in my life, <laughs> Romney kind of surprised me on that front. But yeah, I, I don't know how you get around that. I mean, I think part of this is just naturally Obama's demeanor. I think that he tends to be... Um, maybe just a little bit less emotional about things than some other people are. And that can be a really good thing. I think probably that's advantageous to him in certain aspects of the job. But it's also really difficult to relate to people when that's the situation. And, and we have seen that he has that relatability problem, not just in terms of being professorial, but in terms of coming off as being elitist in, in, in a number of different instances. So in, a cultural, I don't, I, in, the sen in a cultural sense. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it, it, this, sound, this sounds kind of silly, but I actually think it's not. When you go back to that comment that he made about arugula in Iowa, it's like, now. I mean, that's the kind of thing that actually you do expect to hear out of Mitt Romney. And I've I guess, actually forgotten what he said. What did he say about arugula? He said something about, I think, I think the comment was something to the effect of, has anybody seen the price of arugula in Whole Foods lately? And I don't think there is a Whole Foods in Iowa. And... I'm not sure that when you're talking to a bunch of Iowans. Obama really, actually said that as a, yeah. as a non-joke? I yeah. mean, I don't know. I mean, as to, as to whether it was a joke or a non-joke. Yeah. But, but that gets into the demeanor thing, too, because you look at both of these guys, and there are things that they both have said that you think, well, probably they meant that as a joke, but they're not really the funniest people on the planet. I mean, I was astonished last night when Romney cracked a joke, and it actually came off as funny, because that's, like, the first time that's ever right, happened. You want the anniversary joke? or the Yeah. That, which was which was by far the funniest thing I've ever heard Mitt Romney say, and it might be the funniest thing he's ever going to say to you. I don't know. Yeah, Obama. They, guys don't really have funny bones in the way that a lot of other candidates. Were no, probably. Obama's not very successful joking either. Um, it's true. Um, and I and I think you can. I think with both of these guys, you can script them in a way that gets around some of these inherent difficulties that they seem to have in communicating with people. But I think that's part of the problem is, I mean, a debate's not scripted. And I was surprised by Romney's performance and the fact that he did come off as being somewhat warm and likable and relatable. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be something that will be enduring. You know, I, I, I actually wasn't surprised very much by Romney's performance. Uh, I mean, I wrote a piece uh, a week ago in the Atlantic called, called The Coming Romney Comeback Narrative. And I said, you know, one of the elements of this, you know, the media is eventually going to say, do something, you know, there's going to be a comeback narrative. And, and I said one of the opportunities is, because, is the, the debate because uh, expectations for Romney are so low. Um, and I think that helped. I mean, I think uh, if, if expectations had been even, people would still judge Romney the winner, but not, not by nearly so much. I, I think the expectations helped. And, and, and I said in there, the expectation shouldn't be set this way. He's not, Obama is not a good debater. He didn't do well against Hillary, and he was lucky that McCain was so kind of old and crabby. And and in the one-on-one -on -one debates, I mean, not the not the town hall so much. The uh, and, and and Romney's not a bad debater. I mean, he definitely Romney had flashes of of excellence in the in the Republican debates. And people have to remember the multi-person debate format is just problematic. 
And that's what he was stuck in for, for during the primaries. And a one-on-one -on -one debate is a much better chance to shine. And remember, the guy is like a corporate pitch guy, right? I mean, his life consists largely of going around and convincing uh, people whose money he wants, right? He rounding up investment for Bain that they can trust him. And I think he's not bad at it. I, 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 and I've always had trouble disliking Romney the way I like I disliked like George Bush. You know, I don't, I don't, I see how, you know, his he can come off as 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 inauthentic. You know, he can come off as too corporate pitchy. That's his problem. But at the same time, the the fact that that is his, has been his livelihood means he's got the basic skills down to make a damn presentation, and he does it better than Obama. Well, I agree with that, although um, I, I also think that perhaps we would have set expectations higher for Romney in this context if we had uh, known that um, there might be some opportunity for him to refer at some point to a PowerPoint. But <laughs> I guess he didn't have his PowerPoints and Obama didn't have his teleprompter, so my, my assumption was that you know, probably they were going to be um, about evenly matched on this, and I just, I don't know, it turns out that I think Romney just had a good night and Obama didn't. Um, I agree with you, though. Actually, looking back historically, one of my friends from Massachusetts who paid very close attention to Romney's race in 2002 made the comment that what he did last night looked exactly like he, what he did in that race. It's very similar to what you saw in those debates. And so, yeah, if somebody's taking a long view and looking back that far, I'm sure that they wouldn't have been totally surprised by this. Um, I, I was not living in Massachusetts in 2002, so I cannot say that I have that sort of historical perspective. And yeah, I think when you look at Obama and you look back to 2008, that's true. He definitely had some of the same demeanor issues that we saw last night in a lot of those primary debates. So yeah, probably if people were taking a more historical view of this, the expectations would have been set differently. But but I also think both camps did such a job of going out and trying to throw, or throw uh, expectations artificially through the floor that in some respects, people stop playing that game. Mm -hmm start assuming that everything is just total crap. And I, I'm not sure that what the Obama camp did in terms of trying to lower expectations actually benefited them because I think people just didn't find it plausible. Now, perhaps they do in hindsight. I also think for the actual average undecided voter viewer out there, it was kind of too late to, to do the, the last minute media spin stuff doesn't matter. And these people just were, had gotten the general message that Romney is like a screw up. He keeps saying bad things that don't work and stuff. And I just think that that really worked um, to his advantage. So like going forward, I guess I would just have two last questions. One, one uh, is what advice would you give Obama? And I don't think you have to worry about him like watching this and taking your advice. So you can <laughs> you can give us your best your best secrets My to great Obama good. debating advice for Barack Obama. Yeah. What advice would I give him? I think he needs to be very careful about things that look like the sort of looking down, not making eye contact, looking peeved, looking irritated. Well, he was taking notes, and it didn't come off well, you're right, but I think when he was looking down, he was taking notes. Big mistake. But that's, that's what he was doing. But that's probably true, but he needs he needs to rehearse and find a better way of doing that if that's going to be important for him. Yeah. Um, I also think that perhaps he he may want to resist taking as many notes anyway, because I think that may have led him into a position where when he then came to give a response to things, yeah. you know, I noticed throughout it seemed that Romney was doing the first of all, second of all, third of all. Obama did the, this, yeah. and this 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 and there were so many answers where I remember getting to the end and I just, you know, we were sitting here watching this and I just looked at my husband and said, what was that? Like, what was he talking about? No, no he didn't maintain the thread well. He wasn't at his, at his, at at the top of his game. I've, I've seen him do impromptu speaking better than that, but, um, but I think those are, I think those are maybe some things behaviorally that he could do to improve. Um, I think clearly one of the things he needs to get his staff to do immediately is actually run the numbers on what Romney is proposing in terms of this deduction stuff. And he needs to figure out how he links an attack on that back into this 47% stuff or back into the Bain attacks or something of that nature. And if he can do that, he may perform a little bit better. But yeah, fundamentally, I think the demeanor was the problem. I mean, people will cut people a lot of slack if they don't have their facts 
specifically right, or if they're not making the best possible argument, if they seem like they're a likable person and they're not getting off pussy on stage. But, I mean, you really kind of look like he was. Yeah. Yeah. And when you already come off as cold, people are like, okay, this is a cold, grumpy guy. What's the point of it? Without this? being effectively mean. If you're gonna if you're gonna be pissed off, be effectively mean. That's that's <laughs> right. I mean and that's yeah, and that's always been one of my things is that there are certain people in politics who are, just are not gonna come off as being the most likable, warm people. Um, I think in certain respects, um, Rudy had this issue. I think that there are a lot of people who just kind of had this this view of Rudy as being this tough enforcer not the nicest guy, tough guy. And I guess he could have gone into debates and tried to be Mr. Cuddly, but I don't think it would have really worked. And so, yeah, him going into debates and being the guy who was essentially shiving Romney over things like the Sanctuary Mansion was much more effective for him. Mm -hmm. I think Obama kind of needs to think through that, think about what really works for him, what are people going to naturally think of him anyway, is there a way that he can just operate within that but be more effective in attacking? Mm -hmm. Probably there are. Okay, final question. I assume you think this is going to make uh, an actual difference in the polls and the numbers. Um, and if so, do you care to like go out on a limb? I mean, if we take a, a, a one concrete indicator, I mean, in a way a good one is Rasmussen because it's only a three-day tracking poll, so in only three days we will have a number, a uh, public number, that totally reflects post-debate. Rasmussen is thought of as having a Republican lean. It's a robo-poll, and it's, um, it's giving Obama, I think, I think right now only a two-point. It gave him, a, I think, a two-point in the last reading edge. Will it be, will there be like a swing to like in Rasmussen, like, like a couple of points Romney advantage, or...? or? Um, I'm not sure about that. One of the things that I think, is, I don't know, polling is getting complicated on this, so let me just tell you some general thoughts. I mean, first of all, I think to date, though there have been many complaints from Republicans and conservatives about polls being skewed, I think that while specific numbers might be skewed, like that Quinnipiac poll that came out, I think that they were giving Obama more support than he actually had in certain swing states. I don't think the actual result is skewed. I think that in actual fact, Certainly up until now, Obama has been ahead and has been ahead in most of these swing states. Mm -hmm. So that's point number one. Um, I think we need to think about the fact that early voting and absentee voting is underway. So a lot of those votes that could have gone to Obama probably have already been banked. Yeah, but, right? but, but the undecideds hadn't voted, right? The undecideds haven't voted, that's true, but I'm not sure whether that necessarily is going to affect the final outcome or, or, or rather what undecideds are thinking after the first debate. I'm not sure that's going to affect the final outcome to the extent that people think that it is because you do have so much more early voting going on in a lot of these swing states, and let's not forget the Democrats have a very, very good GOTV operation that is going to be very much focused on capitalizing on that early voting and making sure that those absentee ballots come in. So that's just something to bear in mind globally with regard to the numbers. Now, as far as undecideds who were watching last night, yes, I think undecideds watched and were like, wow, what the hell with regard to the president? Like, really? Why, what's, what's the point here? And I think that certainly does create an opportunity for Romney. Whether he can capitalize on that depends on the next couple of debates. It depends on what kind of advertising is running in a lot of these swing states. Um, it depends on how many people ultimately, um, you know, one of the problems he may have in some place like Ohio is there is a certain percentage of the electorate there that, in principle, I think if you were running, um, if you were running a John McCain, if you were running Rick Perry, if you were running, dare I say it, even though I loathe the guy, possibly a Rick Santorum, somebody, certainly a Tim Pawlenty, somebody who had a little bit more sort of common grassroots sort of ordinary man appeal. There's a certain sector of the electorate that might be inclined to vote for them, certainly wouldn't vote for Obama. The question I think that Romney has when you're looking at people like that is they don't want to vote for him. To date, polls have suggested that they do not want to vote for him. Now, they're certainly not going to vote for Obama. But debates like that, if they're paying attention to them, and that's another factor because we need to look at what the viewership numbers were, mm -hmm. if they're paying attention to them, does that kind of performance do enough to get them to go, okay, I'll hold my nose and do it, or does it not? Because if those people just sit the election out, potentially that could make a state like Ohio look a little bit different. Well, so, anyway, ultimately, yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> isn't it a problem in that regard that part of what Romney did or was perceived as doing was actually moved to the middle? I mean, he didn't get, he didn't throw any bones to those people, did he? Um, possibly. I think, uh, I think that 
suggesting that the attack about him wanting to raise taxes on the middle class was inaccurate and false. Um, and on a par, I think he compared that to being on a par with, um, you know, your five-year-old children who sort of keep fibbing and saying the same thing over and over again, but it's not true. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe, because I think that that speaks to some of those concerns. However, yeah, I think a lot of that group, fundamentally, they have a problem with Romney, I think partly because of some of the Bain and offshore, offshoring ads that have been run, um, but also most fundamentally because I think all of that narrative ties in to what they see just literally when they're looking at the guy. I think when they look at Romney, they see a guy who looks an awful lot like the guy who laid them off or laid their brother off or laid their dad off or whatever. And so that's a hurdle to get over. But but I do think that some of what he said last night potentially allays those concerns. I think some of the energy discussion potentially allays those concerns um, in a state like Ohio, in possibly some parts of Virginia. But, you know, I, I don't know. It's it's one debate. Um, there is a history of incumbent presidents not always performing awesomely in the first debate. Um, my expectation is that the Obama team will probably going to have a right old freak out about this, and they're going to do a lot better preparation for the next debate. Probably Romney's not going to be able to pull off the kind of win that he did last night in the ones that are to come, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Um, it, I think the point here is that prior to this debate, I was really of the view that it would be extremely, extremely difficult for Romney to get in a position where he could actually win this, and now it's less difficult. Yeah. As a fight. Yeah. Safe to say. Okay, well, thanks so much. I know you've got to go, and it's also the case that as the sun has come more directly through the window behind you, your image has gotten darker, so oh, really? it's about time to sign off anyway. But that's a great opportunity to remind people that this is available through podcast as well as on video. So even if you can't actually see the person... Uh, there's, a, there's a medium uh, yes. in which that doesn't matter. Um, but thanks so much, Liz. Thank this you. This has been really fun. Yeah, it has. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay.